Thank you guys, everyone, so much for coming. This is a great turnout to learn about the soil. That's wonderful. I want to just say thanks first to our sponsors. Um, well, actually, first, thanks to Deborah and one of her producers, Jesse Beckett, for coming to Iowa. And we're the third group ever to watch the film, so that's a big honor for us here at Iowa State. Um, and thanks to our sponsors, the Leopold Center, uh, the Department of Agronomy, the Greenlee School um, of Journalism, the ISU Lecture Series, and the Iowa Learning Farms for the popcorn. Thank you very much. Uh, a nice touch. Oh, and our friends at UNI at the Center for Energy and Environmental Education who got to show the film last night. So the program tonight, we're going to show the film first. It's 90 minutes. Um, and immediately after, we're going to have a really uh, short um, special presentation for Deborah. Then we'll take a, about a five-minute break, uh, and then we'll reconvene for a panel discussion with Deborah and some ISU scientists. Um, and if you need bathrooms, they're all on the first floor, so you have to go down the stairs. There's some right below us um, by the vending machines, some by the elevators, and then down the hall on the first floor. So if you need the bathrooms, we tried to put some signs up, but they're all downstairs. All right, I think, um, what's up? Oh, and while people are still getting seated, Deborah, you want to say a few words before we start? Thank you. Uh, it's really great to be in Iowa. This is actually the third audience that's seen the film. We premiered at the Smithsonian on Sunday, and then we were in Cedar Falls last night, and now here. And it's been really great for me to come right from Washington that felt like a really American experience, especially with the cherry blossoms all happening, and then to come to Iowa. And uh, uh, people said, well, why are you going to Iowa? And I said, well, I was invited. And also, the relationship that Iowa and the people here have with the soil is unique. And so I thought this was a great place to, to test out this particular work. I don't know, this, am I holding this right? Is this good? Play it. Um, I, 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 trying to figure out what to say about this film. I made a film called The Future of Food, and it was very well received. And then people started asking me, what was I going to do next? And I said, I'm making a film on soil. And I just kind of tossed it off. Yeah, I'll make a film on soil. Then when I actually started making the film, I realized how complex soil is and what a challenge it would be to make that film. But I persevered and made it. And uh, I hope that you like it. One of the first days that we were shooting, uh, my cameraman that I've worked with for several years, we set up the shot, and it was of this shot of the soil. And so I said, well, there's the shot. And he set it up, and he framed it and focused it and everything. I said, OK, action. He said, there's nothing happening. you know." So I realized that my job was going to be to get to people to understand everything that happens to make that soil, everything that's going on in that soil, and everything that happens because of that soil. And believe me, to take a film that's about light and movement and make a film about soil, which is very dark and actually has a lot of movement, but not much that you can see with your eye, has been a, a really interesting challenge. Uh, and I especially want to thank Fred Kirschenman, who's in the film and who really has helped me understand how important soil is and is one of the main reasons why I made Iowa my, one of my first stops in showing this film. So um, thank you all for coming on this beautiful spring evening. And please stick around for the, the uh, discussion, because it'll be mostly Q&A and discussion. So I think it should be really interesting. So thank you very much. So there's still people coming in the back. So if you have a seat that's next to you that is not taken, I'm going to ask people from the outside to shift in, because there's still about 30 people in the back that don't have seats yet, and we don't want to have to trip over everybody. So if you're on the edge, I'd appreciate it if you scooted in so we can fit everybody into this room. It's exciting. There's 250 seats. It's almost all full. OK, everybody. Thanks so much for your patience. This is a great problem to have, I guess. I need you to get settled, and I think we're going to get this thing rolling. Thank you. OK, everybody. Here in about a minute, we're going to try to get this started again so that we don't keep you all too late. So if everybody can find a seat. 
The one disadvantage we'll have when we get to everybody's questions is that we're only running just the mics up here at front. So panelists, when we get to a part where people are asking questions, if you can be sure to repeat that back so that everybody has a chance to know what you've been asked, I think that would be really helpful. Um, I'm Jerry Neal, and I work at the Leopold Center, and I um, have the privilege to be here with you tonight, and I also have the privilege to work with Fred Kirschman, who you saw featured on this film. And Fred is going to be our panel moderator. And so, Fred, I'll let you get started. We'll see maybe 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I was going to give a little bit more time to introductions and all that, but uh, since we lost some time, and I want to get to your questions as quickly as possible. So what I'd like to do is, uh, first of all, we have two of our eminent soil scientists from the agronomy department here at Iowa State University with us tonight. Uh, and um, they're... Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, they, we had introduced you before already. Um, anyway, um, uh, Michael Thompson and, uh, and uh, uh, Robert uh, Horton. And um, so I'd like to start, first of all, uh, asking Michael and Robert uh, if they have some – I'm almost interested in what soil scientists, you know, have to say about things like this. So I'd like to know if you have some comments you'd like to share, either – some things that you felt might have been missing in it or some things that you felt were particularly relevant to the kinds of issues that we're talking about. So if we could start having each of you do that, and then I don't know if you have another comment you want to make or two, and then we'll go right to the questions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, I enjoyed the film very much. Uh, the, uh, the parts that I probably identified most with were the parts about soil. Uh, and the idea that building soil and managing soil is important, not only for every landowner, but for us as a society. So that theme, I think, is, is a really important one and an important message for, for all of us. Um, you know, as a, as a teacher, what I try to do um, when, I'm, when I'm communicating with my students is to connect something that is unknown to what is known, and that usually involves uh, some kind of analogy. So uh, the analogy in the title of this film, The Symphony of the Soil, I thought was a terrific analogy. Uh, if you think of, and you, can, and you can think of it on several levels, any, any symphony has p different kinds, different parts. Uh, it, it, it may have a slow movement and a fast movement and a sad movement and, uh, and, uh, and a happy movement. Or you can think of the uh, symphony orchestra that is an array of instruments, each of which needs to be played in a different way. And I think that's one of the key messages that, that I saw as a soil scientist coming out of the film is the enormous diversity of soils across the world and the, um, the importance of managing those soils in ways that are appropriate for the soil where it is, in the context where it's found. Um, so those, those parts, I think, are very important lessons. And again, not just for every landowner and every person who has uh, an important responsibility to manage soil, but also uh, for society as a whole. So that's, that, that analogy of the symphony of the soil and the, the enormous complexity of the individual parts and yet how the soil fits together to make a whole, that's a wonderful analogy and one that I really uh, resonated with as I watched the movie. I, I heard uh, Deborah speak earlier this afternoon and she uh, one thing that she said really... Um, I was very impressed with, maybe, maybe it wasn't too important to you, but it was very important to me. She said that every filmmaker has a profound responsibility for the images that the filmmaker puts in front of the audience because those images are indelible imprints on our brains. And I think there were some extraordinary images in the film, and I, I'm really uh, delighted to have those imprints on, on my brain. That was Michael Thompson. 
I'm Bob Horton. I also enjoyed the film, and I also could relate uh, mostly to the first part of the film and to the end of the film. I liked the comments of Danny Hillel at the end of the film, more of a, some theological uh, statements that he had. I um, think that answering Fred's question about what maybe I didn't see in the, in the film, I, th I thought that uh, the, this concept of topography and that how we can manage you know, as part of, the, of an ecosystem, just the topography was not, so, was not emphasized so much in the film. You know, we, talk, we, we looked at different farming practices and situations, and, but they were, they were kind of small. And, and you know, whatever, whatever the local situation was at the farms that were visited or the people that were, were talked to, but the whole sense of having some you know, uh, ecological uh, management uh, layout on, on, you know, for how to, to, to manage soil or, or the agroecosystem with regard to a topography. So a little bit bigger scale, I think, is what I'm trying to say uh, at this point. Soils and crops. I really, you know, soils, we often think about it in, in an agricultural sense. We think about it for food production. And that's, that is a, an important aspect of soil, an important role of soil in, in that particular uh, type of a setting. But Soils, soils are really important for crops, and crops are important for soils, plants are important for soils, and food production is important. And I think that was emphasized quite a bit in the, in the film. But also soils and water. Soil has a tremendous impact on the hydrologic cycle, how much, you know, when it rains or when we have precipitation of any kind or irrigation or whatever. Uh, how does the water infiltrate into the soil? How does it run off? Uh, evaporation of water, water holding, that was alluded to a little bit. There was a little bit of a, of a Coke bottle, it looked like, or some sort of a little demo given, but not, not a lot of detail. And the, and the interactions of soil and water is very important on the quantity aspects, you know, flooding or, or water availability or drainage or you know, all these things, but also on water quality types of things. That, that's uh, important as well, very important. Here in Iowa, we talk quite a bit about water quality and now, some of it would be associated with agricultural chemicals that we apply to the soil, but a lot of it is due to erosion in the soil itself getting into the water. So soil water hydrology. Soils and climate. This, this was mentioned you know, a few th times of greenhouse gases, this t sort of thing, but not really uh, brought out in a tremendous way, in a, in, a, in a deep way or full way, the important role that soil has its impact on climate. The way that uh, we can say the sun's radiation or the net radiation partitions into evaporating water, into heating the ground and heating the air. And there, there's a whole dynamic of interaction with the soil and the gas phase and the soil and the climate itself. That, that soil has, a tr has tremendous importance to us, how we care for the soil and what we grow on the soil, and in particular the water aspect because how much of the energy partitions to evaporating water or changing temperature, sensible heat. So soils, climate, climate change, mo modeling, that sort of thing. Soils and ecosystems, we did have some look at other ecosystems besides agricultural ecosystems. And we, as, it, as the scientists went through the different soil orders, you know, we saw the, the desert, we saw the, you know, some different ecosystems, but you know, soil's important in all the terrestrial ecosystems. It's not just, not just the things that are cropped or not just where we have uh, agriculture, but in all for, for production and, and uh, ecosystem services. Soils and pollutants. This would maybe be the water quality or, or air quality types of things as well. Soils and health. You know, we, we talked and had some people talk about the, uh, the microbial, the biological aspects that were emphasized quite a bit in the film uh, of soil. I, I don't recall hearing uh, from one of the aspects of uh, soil microorganisms. There, there was the one scientist that said that we don't know so many, uh, we don't know so much about the microorganisms. Many of them we haven't even characterized yet, but we, we do know that from uh, some soil microorganisms, we, we get some of our antibiotics and some of the, our medicines that would come from soil microorganisms that is also an important role of soil. So soil has an important role on health, 
you know, not only uh, pollutants that would get into the food chain through soil, but, but you know, its effect on water quality and its effect on, on medicines. These are just some thoughts that I have on, on in response to the film. Maybe too many thoughts. Well, you would want the 20-hour soil oh, film, yeah. <laughs> which I also wanted, but I had to be stopped. I had to be stopped. You know, and I totally agree with you, and we had a really long cut, and we included some of the things that you had brought out, which I wanted to put in, but... You know, the fact is, as a filmmaker, I want people to actually sit through the film and enjoy it. <laughs> so you have to cut it off. But I'm with you. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, the interesting thing is we have all these great ideas and this material. So one thing I'm doing, this is Symphony of the Soil. I'm also making a bunch of short films called Sonatas of the Soil that go deeply into one topic that are about 15 minutes long, you know, from 12 to 20 minutes. And we'll be able to deal, because we've shot a bunch of stuff, and we'll be able to deal with some of, the, some of the things that you'd like to see, which I would also like to see, except I can't make the audience sit there for 10 hours. So that, you know, I agree with you, and it's really painful. And I actually, you know, for me, I was thinking, let's not make it about, agri at a certain point, I said, let's not make it about agriculture at all. Let's make it about everything else about soil. But then, you know, we had these screenings with people, and people kept saying, you know, people really care about what's in it for me. How does this relate to me? And for people, that is agriculture. Most of it is about agriculture. So we, you know, I kicking and screaming, I said, okay, we have to do a bunch of stuff on agriculture because that, you know, for the average person, that's really how we impact the soil most is what we eat and you know what kind of agricultural system do we support as a society so i agree with you you know and i uh, oh god we should have had all that in but but you know i, I will i want to do the sonatas because i think the more you know one of the things when you think about you know soil agriculture soil agriculture you know what can we get out of it it that sort of is that to me is not the right attitude the right attitude is here's this amazing thing you know, this organism, and it provides all kinds of things for us, and scientists call it ecosystem services because when they use those words, they can get grants, you know. <laughs> but, it, you know, it, it's also, I agree with you, and, and part of this idea of understanding soil as a miracle and understanding our relationship with it is all the things that you brought out. So, anyway, I th want to thank both of you because I, I really uh, appreciate your comments, and and one of the main things that I learned about soil in, in, in making this is the one of the things that John Regnold brought out at the beginning, that, you know, America, we have like 42, 43 percent of our soils are the two most fertile soils, the mollusols and alphasols. And, for example, in China, it's about 11 percent of their soils are really fertile. I was showing my work there a couple years ago, and the Chinese scientist that was our host was telling me that because they don't have a lot of fertile soil and they don't have a lot of water, that their society is, is more collective. It's developed into more of a collective. How can they pull together to use those resources in a way that can uh, you know, benefit the society? Whereas Americans, because we have this amazingly rich soil, you know, we feel like we can do whatever we want. You know, and we can, you know, like Fred was saying, you know, you can farm the soil, move on, farm the soil, move on. And then we have these amazing soils in the Midwest here that are so rich that, you know, you can lose half, you know, of the topsoil and you can still grow amazing crops. And, and, and thinking about this over the last few years, it's made me realize, you know, soil, living on a soil does shape culture. You know, it does shape the society that's living on it. And as Americans, you know, we don't like limits because if you look at, our land, it's, it's not limited. So we don't like limits, and we don't, and we don't want to have to not do stuff. So I think, you know, thinking about that as we go into the future, you know, we have sort of actually come up against these limits. But our character is, we don't like limits, don't tell me I can't do it, I'm going to do whatever I want. A and that's our character, and that's great. But another side of our character is that we like a challenge. And when people can't tell us, you can't do that, you know, we say, I, I can do that, I'm going to do that. So I'm hoping that this film will have people really think about how soil has shaped the American character in a wonderful way and hope to really push that towards meeting challenges rather than just continuing on as if we have these unlimited resources, which, in fact, you know, a few hundred years ago we did have. But now it's kind of a different story. So I've thought a lot about that soil and culture and soil and character because it does shape us. And 
it certainly shaped, you know, shaped the American nature, which in, in, in a good way. So it's kind of something to think about. Okay, well, let's uh, uh, go to your questions. Thank you all for your additional comments. So, uh, and uh, if you would please stand up and talk really loud, because I got hearing aids, so uh, uh, I need to hear your question if I'm going to repeat them. And, and if, if you would address your question uh, to, you know, wh whoever you think, uh, you know, the question applies to most, whether it's Deborah or our scientist or myself. Or, uh, yeah. Well, I think there were about five questions yeah. there. <laughs> Maybe I'll pick one. Um, wh where is uh, Iowa State putting its research resources uh, these days? Um, well, there is certainly, um, well, there's an enormous amount of research that deals with soils across the university. Of course, in the agronomy department, which is crops, soils, and ag climatology, we do a lot of soil science research. Um, there are, are a number of folks in ag engineering who also do work that relates to soils and water quality. And uh, there are folks in geology who are interested in soils, uh, either modern soils or paleosols that have been around for thousands of, of years. Um, and there, there are others, I'm sure. So there's a lot of different kinds of research going on at Iowa State that deals with soils. I'll give you an example of a project that um, I'm a part of, it's a, it's a large collaborative project that involves uh, eight faculty members, uh, many of whom are in the agronomy department, some of us are soil scientists, some are, are crop scientists. Um, it also involves uh, folks from ag engineering and from the, um, and from EEOB, which is evolutionary and Ecology and organism, organismal biology. Uh, so, in in that in that project, which is a joint project where we are trying to take exactly the kind of approach that w uh, was uh, suggested in the film, a systems approach to understanding uh, the impacts of raising crops primarily destined for biofuels. And we have found working together that we can compare on a systems level a variety of, of uh, meaningful agricultural management regimes and explore what happens when we uh, devote a, uh, uh, soil to producing either corn, primarily raised uh, for, uh, uh, as a biofuel or perennial system. So this is the shorthand version of the project. So imagine a, uh, just a simple comparison of row crops to perennial systems. In both cases, crops raised to uh, primarily for the purpose of producing bioenergy. And by taking the systems approach, we look at not only the above ground production of the crops, but we also look at the below ground storage of carbon, and we look at the water quality effects, uh, th how these different kinds of system approaches uh, impact the quality of water that is draining from, from the soils. So uh, I, I lift that, uh, that example of a research project up, I, and, I, and as I say, I'm only one of a number of scientists who are collaborating on that project. but. The importance of that systems approach, I think, is something that we increasingly see uh, at, at Iowa State. Does that come close to? OK. OK. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been farming since the 60s. And I started out farming a more conventional way and, and pretty much done it the way Iowa State said. You use everything. I'm not changed over to an organic farmer, but I am a no-till farmer. I am able to build my organic matter. The, the erosion is, is way down. That's what got me changing over to no-till is that my erosion was bad. And now I don't have the erosion. I'm building the soil in a large commercial operation. And it's, it's not quite organic, but I think it's one of the best steps to build my soil 
So it, it, I think there's, I'd like to see more about no-till in the film. Well, well, John Ashelman, uh, who is the wheat farmer from the Palouse, who is the big advocate of uh, our, our advocate of no-till. I mean, we had some of the other uh, organic ones. Uh, you know, they they don't till, but they didn't talk about that because he was our guy. He's not an organic farmer. He's a no-till guy, and he, you know, that to me was really interesting because, you know, they have a lot of hills there, and his whole experience. I mean, they've lost, I don't know, fifty percent of it. I mean, they have like. I don't know, huge amounts of topsoil in the Palouse. And you can see he's just so enthusiastic about it. And you can see the difference in his soil, <coughs> the other soil up there that do till. So I think no-till, you know, it's one of the kind of happening things that uh, that is giving back to the soil. That's the important thing, I think, giving back, giving back, not taking, taking, taking. So I think it's great. And um, I think that's something that more and more farmers are going to understand as a – you know, wherever they're going with it, that that part is important and that has to do with soil science and, you know, you have to feed the soil and all these things that people are now beginning to understand. So I think that's great. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciated what you presented here today. You touched my heart. You presented this in such a way that I would love to have you as a conductor and anything, any other film that you decide to do. I feel that there was so much logic there that, and the emotion that follows to, to present something like this was um, really very adequate. I really thought that your, president, your presentation of the water and all the relationships of the bacteria and the, the fungi was so, um, it didn't need to be over the top. It, 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 it needed to be exactly what it was because it'll just feed a person who's going to want to want to know more is going to want to know all the other pieces that you're going to put together in this component and my question to you is when is this going to be available for the public because I have a lot of people that I would like to see this as it is with no changes and their curiosity will maybe push you forward to do even more faster Yeah, well, uh, the film, you know, this is just the third time we've shown it to the public. And so um, probably what I'm hoping, we're going to show it at some festivals, and then I hope we're going to be able to show it at theaters, have a theatrical opening in New York and some other cities, because I just really want to get the word out, you know, and that's also filmmakers always like to show their films in theaters. That feels really good. Um, so it won't be for sale probably till the fall, till October, but you can go to our website, symphonyofthesoil.com, and you can pre-order or you can also um, put your name in and join our soil community, and then we can let you know when it's for sale. We can let you know when it's showing again in, in the area, you know, where you live. And then also the sonatas will be available. And also on the website, there's some short clips that are free that we shot that were not in the film called Grace Notes. So we actually have a pretty content-heavy website that just came up last Thursday. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, and so I hope when it comes out in, in September, October, that people do share it with their friends and they, they do appreciate it because there's a lot of things, I think even as citizens, you know, the farm bill, I mean, we should encourage that our tax dollars go for conservation and, you know, things like that, that, that help everyone and, ha you know, help us as a country. So that's my goal, but thank you very much. And, and you know, do, do go to our website or you can sign up back there. We have some sign-ups. We have a, an iPad and some sheets that you can sign up, and so we can put you on, on our list and let you know when things are happening. But it's been great to show it in Iowa, and there might be other screenings that people sponsor here where I come or someone else comes so we can have public screenings so we can get people excited about it and not just get the conversation going about what can, can we do as citizens about our soil. Okay, uh, let's take uh, one or two more questions. If somebody has, yeah, okay, right there. Yeah. Uh, I was glad to see that you had Rob Hopkins on, who has started the transition movement over in England, and then it's spread now all over the United States. Um, and his message of localization of energy, localization of food, and et cetera. Um, my question is, um, how do we counteract the message 
of um, a few corporations that own our food chain. How, how do we counteract that message um, when, um, you know, they're persons and have all the power of money? Um, I, 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 that part really bothers me when they say that they're going to feed the world through industrial farming. You can ask these guys stuff, too. But yeah, the transition movement, actually one of the sonatas that we have for sale back up there, we have a whole uh, sonata on the transition movement and Rob Hopkins, which is really exciting because it's really about localizing everything, not only your food and your energy, but even your entertainment, you know, where you can come together and like the soil stories that you have here in, in Iowa and also, uh, you know, singing. And so everything becomes more local, which is going to happen anyway. You know, we go kicking and screaming or we go thinking this is going to be lovely and we can do this. And, uh, you know, I think the corporate, you know, I, th I mean, I think we need to fight the corporations. Of course, I believe that. But I also think the more fun thing to do, an interesting thing to do is just do, do our own thing. You know, start local, whatever. It starts with farmer's markets. It starts with growing your food, getting to know your neighbors, reskilling, which is a great thing they're doing in California and people are getting together and people who know how to do stuff, whether it's baking or carpentry or these skills that people have lost, they teach other people how to do these things. And it's fun. And, it, and you're engaged, you know, and you're doing something. And so I think it's just part of creating an alternate system where that's where your energy goes. A and the rest of this, you know, it, it will, f whatever, wherever, if it falls away or not, we've got a nice community here. And we can, you know, we can live through it, you know. And I think that that's part of countering the big impersonal corporate uh, reality is the opposite of that, that is community and friendship and skills and, you know, doing stuff ourselves and, and you know, stuff like that, which is, which is challenging and fun. And, you know, people like that. It feels good. It feels good, you know. And if you like to sew or you like to bake or whatever you like to do, you know, cooking is fun. Gardening is fun. I think it's just doing it you know, and letting other people know that we're, uh, that it's there to do. And, and you, the Sonata, you know, it's a great thing. It, he, he's amazing talking about that because, like he was saying in the film, you know, they had that strike over there. They were a few days away from not having any food. Well, if you have local food and canning, preserving, all that kind of stuff, then you say, well, nothing at the grocery store. I don't care. I've got my cupboard here. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's a, it's a wonderful movement, and it's – it's catching on like wildfire all over the world because people recognize the time is right for that. Okay, one more. Yeah. First, I want to echo the sentiments that uh, the film touched me. I really appreciate uh, that view and, and just from so many levels, um, the microscopic pictures and such. But uh, some of the other questions tonight have kind of begged my question, and I'm thinking more specifically in Iowa. And when we think of Iowa agriculture, and so this is a question for the scientists, in Iowa agriculture we have a tolerable loss rate of, you know, for most soils, about five tons per acre. The Iowa Daily Erosion Report tells us that probably over half of our land is actually losing it, like, uh, more than this tolerable level. And we have several hundred thousand acres in Iowa that are losing at something like ten times that tolerable level. And so I'm wondering, how many... Uh, Tons of soil do we have per acre on, say, the Des Moines lobe? And how many more years can we continue to lose 5 or 10 or 50 tons per acre before we start to impact uh, our fertility and our ability to be such a, 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 a producer of food? It's too, it's too late to calculate how many tons. We, we have a lot of tons, but f for me, soil erosion is the, the most serious problem. I mean, that, that is where we're, where we're losing our soil. Now, many of the other issues that we have with soil are about a quality of the soil, but this is really the quantity of the soil. And if we're the ac accelerated erosion means we're losing soil faster than it's, it's being developed. And that, that is a, a losing, very much a losing situation. I don't know all the details of your tons and all that, that question, but... He knows, I think. 
I don't know. I don't know how long. You know. A long time. A long time. A long time. Because, uh, honestly, in Iowa, we are blessed with incredibly resilient soils. We, it's, it's an incredible good fortune. And so, yes, you're right. There are going to be eroded spots on certain parts of the landscape where production will go down. There will be other spots on other parts of the landscape where biomass production will go up as a result of the reorganization of organic matter on the landscape. So, I, and this kind of goes back to the point I made at the very beginning. Soils are incredibly diverse and site-specific management is one of the most important things that any landowner can do to understand how a soil in a given place is connected to other soils on the landscape and how that site can be best managed. Now, the gentleman over here who talked about uh, no-till farming can, can attest to that because he's using techniques that limit soil erosion. I, and I agree entirely with Bob that soil erosion for us is the most significant problem in, in Iowa. Um, to some extent, it's a problem because it decreases production where organic matter is lost. But uh, probably the biggest cost of erosion is dredging out the ditches. Uh, in other words, what do we do with all that that soil that has been that has been moved. So there are there are lots of costs to erosion. It's a, it's an enormous problem, but I I think at least here in our state we are blessed that we have some time. Now, if we were to go to Maine or New York or to Vermont or to Greece. Uh, or uh, uh, or some of the other uh, countries that were mentioned in, in the film, it would be an entirely different story. So the main message is soils are different in different places, and that means they need different kinds of management. For how many of you, was this the first time that you heard you know, a good teaching about soil, some in-depth teaching? For some of you, great. And, and many people left, I know. So I really, I really am thankful for this film, that it can serve as a means of communication on the importance of soil, the intricacies, the complexities, and the importance for soil. And I really ask each one of you to be good communicators about the soil. You know, we have, we have these natural resources. Soil, water, and air are primary natural resources required for life on Earth. Everybody knows the importance of water. Everybody knows the importance of good quality of air. But very few people, small fraction of people, understand the importance of soil. Everything we can do to communicate that in all avenues, the importance of soil, I think is, 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 is something that is now and timely. And it's a very important thing that we can do. And this film, I think, really contributes to that. Okay, thank you all very much. Uh, I'd like to just add one thing to your question that I think we also need to enter the, into the equation around how much longer we can do it. And it's not just the loss of soil, but also the degradation of soil, as we've heard. And a recent uh, report from the United Nations indicates that 25% of our soils on the planet now are, are in a state of degradation. Uh, and then you've got to add to that that we've been able to substitute for those losses you know, over the last 60 years or more with cheap energy and surplus uh, reserves of rock phosphate and potassium and water, and all of those resources are in a state of depletion. So we have to really take seriously what you have presented to us in this film because I think that restoring the biological health of our soil and the biodiversity of our species on the planet are the two major resources that we're going to have available to us uh, to maintain uh, an adequate food production system in the future. And so I want to also say, Deborah, I, you know, I have become more and more convinced that the arts have to play an increasing role in our culture uh, to 
happen to us, what happened to us tonight that it got to our hearts. And so I want to thank you for that. I know you've given like four years of your life putting this together. And uh, I have told people for a long time that nobody's going to be able to see this and still treat soil like dirt. And I think you've demonstrated that tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Fred. And also, you're welcome. And thank you so much to Fred. He's really been such an ally and, and such a mentor and inspiration to me for years now since we since he was in my first film, The Future of Food. And as I was making this film, uh, at some point, Fred said to me, this film is the most important thing you'll ever do. No pressure, Fred. <laughs> but he's been really wonderful, and he's really helped me see this I in a whole different way and realize how important it is, and also encouraging this idea of art and beauty and music and, and painting in a film that you can mix art and science, and using both those things, you can move people and you can inspire them uh, to, to change and see things in a different way. So thank you so much, Fred. You're one of my total heroes. <laughs> And thank you again all for coming tonight.